Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Today we're going to be talking about the situation in Lebanon where over the past few weeks there have been fresh waves of protest. We have been covering the situation in Lebanon regularly for the past many months where there was a very uh, huge popular uprising known as Itifada where hundreds and thousands of people took to the streets protesting not only against the government of that time but also the entire political system. And this brought about a lot of political churning, a lot of initiatives which debated the very nature of politics or society of life in Lebanon itself. And uh, there have been fresh waves of protests recently. So to talk more about this, we have with us Bashir Nakhal of the Lebanese Communist Party. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So the first question is that uh, the latest rounds of protests, there have been at least two to three rounds have happened after the COVID-19 lockdown restrictions mm -hmm. were eased. And they've also been taking place amid a very severe economic crisis. So could you first talk about what has been the nature of the protests, the kind of participation that has taken place, the, ca ca the characters were playing in this? Just after the, um, like with a bit of easing with the quarantine and everything surrounding the COVID-19 uh, uh, epidemic, uh, what's been happening is there was actually more action on the street, more protests happening throughout Lebanon. It wasn't actually centralized in the capital only. There were several things happening um, in Tripoli, for example, in the south, uh, in the Bekaa, and in different regions. So what we saw is that um, with the COVID-19 uh, epidemic and the economic crisis that was actually happening well before it, um, more and more uh, pressure was put on the working classes on and on the um, lower, like, um, uh, or um, more um, disenfranchised population in Lebanon. So we saw um, more um, demands happening on the street. Uh, several groups, some people, maybe individuals, uh, some of them organized and, and parties or organizations, other simply, um, um, let's say, uh, spontaneous actions happening. And in, in some places they were uh, somewhat um, happening at the same time. So it's as with all popular uprisings, it's a plethora of de demands, a plethora of uh, different sided uh, people and organizations. So we can't really say it's all uh, homogeneous. There are different demands, different groups, some of them with uh, certain agendas, others with other agendas. But and all in all, we can say that it's mostly based on uh, the material conditions of uh, people that, that people are being put through and the economic crisis that's been happening for, for so long. So uh, that's basically been accumulating and leading to, to the situation that we're in right now. Right. So could you talk about what some of the key demands that various sections are raising? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, these demands, uh, as we said, there are different groups, different... Uh, uh, political uh, leaning people. So these demands cover the whole spectrum. Some people uh, maybe simply demand uh, some uh, some form of reform in the system or or more uh, rights. Maybe some of them actually are um, like go through the sectarian discourse that's been happening. But others are more progressive. Others talk more from the perspective of. Uh, the dis disenfranchised people and the working class. So we see demands of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, not only reform in the system, but actually a, a need for structural change in the system because of what what it has led us to. The 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 belief that the system that led us to where we are right now can't fix the mistakes or whatever it led to. So we see demands for um, of, like. Uh, getting rid of sectarianism and and fighting the, the the clientelism that the sectarian parties abuse to actually divide the people and to make them clients for the sectarian parties instead of uh, instead of them being citizens in a state where they can demand for better rights. At the same time, we have uh, demands for the one percent to get the brunt of uh, of uh, the blunt of the issue that we've uh, reached right now, instead of that, um, let's say, responsibility falling on the working classes and the people who can't actually hold that uh, that responsibility. They, they didn't have any say in the economic 
um, decision making or the political uh, discourse that's been happening they, they they had no role and very little uh, uh, room to to actually voice their demands so now that the sectarian parties and the ruling class got us into this they actually also want to put the blame on us and make us pay for that through um, austerity measures through working with the uh, IMF and the uh, the World Bank. So that's all a, a, a sort of a fight or a struggle between the 1% that wants to um, get rid of or run away from holding any responsibility and from the remainder of the population that wants to hold them responsible and wants to actually um, change the system to become a more uh, uh, equal one where they can actually live um, as, as citizens in a state and as a people on this land instead of um, a people uh, according to their sect and according to their uh, political um, uh, affiliations. And in this context, how is the Lebanese Communist Party organizing and what are some of the key uh, demands around which it is mobilizing people? <laughs> So the, the Lebanese Communist Party, one of its main contributions is that it's actually um, present in nearly all the Lebanese, on nearly all the Lebanese territory, from the capital to the um, peripheries, if we might say, in, in Beka, in the north, and the south. And it's been trying to, to, to uphold that, to prove that actually it's an uprising that is nationwide. And it's not only... Um, uh, some demands that can be met with some uh, reforms. No, it's actually a, a, an uprising that is nationwide and that can't be divided through sectarianism. Because if you only had this uprising happening in certain areas, you can play on the sectarian discourse that, oh, these are demanding more rights for the sect or they're trying to, um, as uh, some ruling parties or most of them actually are saying, is that uh, um, it's foreign agendas trying to play into this so what's most important is to have this uprising um, like get its demand across through all the, the, the Lebanese party. And th these demands need to be um, pushed to become more radical and more progressive. Uh, and that's, that's actually what we're trying to do and we, what we've been trying to do to, to erase the ceiling of, of, of what we can hope to reach or what we can dream of, of reaching eventually. So this. Um, this is at the same time as not only the work of the Lebanese Communist Party, but with other um, leftist organizations, with other uh, people who are in the same like uh, political uh, affiliation on this. And um, actually, we can also see that these demands are becoming more, if you might say, mainstream. They're becoming more accepted by the general population. Uh, if we look back a bit to the to, uh, uh, 2011, let's say, uh, protests that were um, aiming at um, destroying or fall of the uh, sectarian system, the demands were somewhat lower and the discourse was uh, more liberal and more aimed towards the middle class. Same with the 2015 uh, You Stink movement, if you might yes. say. It was more focused on, on certain demands and reforms uh, related to the trash crisis. Now we hear uh, protesters and even uh, normal people on the ground just talking about uh, the class issue, talking about the 1% versus the 99%, talking about the need to organize, to, to, to revolve, uh, revolt and move this uprising to become actually a, a full-blown revolution so we can reach what we want. So these demands, if you might say, as, as, a, as political demands, as, as economic demands from the um, Communist Party, uh, we might look at the program that it uh, uh, presented to the uprising and to the organizers and people that are taking part in it. And as always, it included a demand to to have um, um, a government that is um, somewhat uh, independent, somewhat um, uh, interim government, as, as you might say, with special uh, uh, powers or with further powers focused on um, de-linking or moving towards a, a, um, an economy that is productive instead of being a, a rentier economy. So these are the demands that, that we are presenting, that we need to move towards s such an economy that, that will allow us eventually to meet um, whatever 
uh, demands we might say as as uh, the, the cl as uh, the working class is demanding but at the same time we also acknowledge that these demands cannot be uh, reached by the the ruling parties or the ruling class that that is there right now they they simply won't give us anything for free they, they won't just uh, give the power that they've had for around 30 years just give it away for that so that's why we need to form a, a sort of a front a sort of uh, a pressuring really uh, like uh, somewhat of um, also a very inclusive a group of uh, the population that is nationwide, that that is sectarian-wide, so they don't play on that discourse, and that also has a, a different, maybe a somewhat different demands, a, a sort of um, a more uh, um, freedom and and choosing those. But but they have common goals and a common common struggle to push for. So that's what is the end goal, because that's the only way that we can reach a, a better situation than the one we are heading to right now. Absolutely. And finally, could you just also talk a bit about how uh, how mobilizing and organizing has been in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, as in what are the challenges the pandemic has presented? Because across the world, this is a question that faces the left also, that how in these times mm -hmm. with so much uncertainty, how do you how do you visualize mobilizing and struggles? Mm, it's actually been a pretty challenging because at the same time with with the COVID-19 pandemic happening, it was also a period where the uprising was going into a downturn, if you might say. So several conditions linked together to, to make it even more challenging. So at first, it, uh, it showed that we needed more like uh, to update our tools to to get on with with um, solving these issues that we were facing. Um, some, something as simple as normal that as we saw before like uh, just meeting between three four people face to face over lunch let's say was impossible it wasn't happening anymore so something as basic as that had to be reformed to to, to find more solutions um, online meetings online uh, scheduled uh, some like um, meetings and uh, and other stuff did help did support in that aspect but the, the the outcome was was seen as it was it had its effect because people were less willing and it was even actually dangerous to ask people to get on the ground to, to exactly. mobilize so so at the same time it was a bit of a dilemma between uh, seeing the conditions worsening but also you can't really uh, endanger people with calling for those protests and to, to put them uh, through that risk and actually, it's, it wasn't us as organizers that, that broke that. Actually, we saw that during the pandemic, people by themselves um, chose that or saw that the danger with um, catching the disease was uh, less dangerous or less risky than to actually go on with these worsening economic conditions. So they mobilized themselves on their own. We saw spontaneous protests happening all over the country, even through the quarantine. Um, and with the, ease, the the loosening of these quarantine or um, conditions that were put uh, in place, we are more able to maybe mobilize to 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 have more freedom on on what to 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 use as tools on the ground. So it is something that is always being updated, being followed, and um, yeah, that's that's what's happening. Thank you so much, Bashir, for talking to us. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch.